Hey everyone. So here in this video, we're going to be talking about fairing recovery, which is a super interesting topic and the physics behind the falling of the fairing back down to earth and the recovery of it. We'll talk about the first principles governing the acceleration and velocity of the fairing, uh, how fast it's falling and what influences that. First, just watch this video and then we'll start it back over and talk about it. So one, what the heck was going on there? What are we even looking at? So this is the fairing uh, on top of the Falcon 9, which encloses the payload of the rocket and protects it from aerodynamic forces. To be as lightweight as possible, it's made out of carbon fiber, and thus it's quite expensive and takes a long time to make. So in the spirit of rocket reuse and not wasting anything, we put our efforts into recovering the fairings uh, so that they could be reusable again on future launches. The way to think about it was, if there were $4 million falling out of the sky in a bag, wouldn't you try and catch it? So that's what is happening here. It's a grand attempt to catch $4 million falling out of the sky. And this was the first time it worked. Now here's the real question. As the fairings falling back down from outer space on this parachute, in this video, does it seem like the fairing is falling faster or slower as it continues down to the boat? Watch again. So is the fairing speeding up or slowing down or just staying the same speed the whole time? That's what we're gonna investigate. So the answer is it's falling at the exact same speed the whole time. This speed is called the terminal velocity. That means that the speed is unchanging because the forces on it are balanced. Newton's second law states that the sum of the forces F is equal to the mass times the acceleration of an object. If the acceleration of the object is the change in velocity over change in time, and the velocity isn't changing with time, that means the acceleration is zero. So what does that mean about our sum of forces? It means that the sum of forces is also zero. The forces, it's not that they don't exist, but instead it's that they're balanced. So what are the forces acting on the object here? Well, those are two forces. One of them is the drag force. The drag force opposes the motion of the falling object. It's always opposite to the direction of the object moving through the fluid. The second force is the weight. The weight is pulling it back down to earth. In this situation, these two forces are opposite and balanced, resulting in a net zero acceleration on the fairing as it falls back from outer space. Terminal velocity is a term commonly used for skydivers, meaning the maximum speed that a human reaches when they jump out of a plane. At that point, they stop accelerating back down to the earth and they just stay at their constant terminal velocity. But this fairing is falling so much slower than a skydiver. Why is that? Well, that's because the drag force on this as a proportion of its weight is substantially higher than that of a skydiver. The parachute has been optimized to have as much drag as possible by maximizing both the coefficient of drag or how much the shape rejects airflow around it and the total area, making it extremely wide for its given weight. 
So this object being lightweight and very high drag means that the drag force resisting its motion is a huge value compared to the weight. And thus the speed that the object reaches where those forces become balanced is a low speed and the object falls slowly. This is the basic principle of how parachutes work. So if you went around your house right now, could you find the object with the highest drag to weight ratio like a parachute and the object with the lowest drag to weight ratio? What would that look like? The opposite of a parachute, something that would fall the fastest, even faster than a big skydiver. Let me know what you find.